the Joe Rogan experience. We still never got to the Bhagavad Gita. Sorry about we that. We turned <laughs> a hard. A yeah. hard I want to know turn. why you think that that's real and what you think is going on in those stories. Well, first you've got the dialogue itself, which is cool wisdom for all people. Yeah, and so, some of it is like hyper bizarre, like. What Oppenheimer quoted at the detonation of the atomic bomb. Right. I am become death. Color destroyer me looks like a creep prevido. Is that the time, time that's a Sanskrit. How does he say it? Kalosh me looks like a creep prevido. Is that time, why time I am the destroyer of time I am the great destroyer and I've come to destroy all worlds. So oh, that's, that's one that's the actual translation. That's the actual translation in English. Because his translation, um, Oppenheimer's was I am become death. Is that because of uh, an issue with uh, the translation between Hindu and no, there's a, English? It's just different people translated, mm. slightly different, but it's it's similar. Meaning, meaning, um, in that particular section that you pulled out, that was Krishna explaining like God is beautiful, God is charming, God is your best friend. He's also death personified. Mm. So he's saying in that particular place, I'm actually also the destroyer of all the worlds. When we think of the yogis explain that God is everything, both the beauty and the destruction as well. And so Krishna just is, is sharing his attributes. And in that particular chapter, chapter 11, he's his, his, the most, most intimidating. Where do you think all these stories come from? Where do you, what do you think the origin of the Bhagavad Gita, of the Mahabharata, of of all the ancient texts, what do you think the origin was? What was the what was the motivation to put this stuff down? What was what was the original concepts that led them to write this? And where did it all come from? Mm. There has to be an origin of these these wisdoms, right? Yeah. What do you think that is? You know, um, to, to even answer the question, I have to take myself out of ragu and just answer like a yoga teacher. Okay. Because the to answer of what do you think, it's one thing you're sort of trained not to do in, as far as what is your personal opinion. Mm -hmm. I can give you my personal opinion, but I have to separate it from what the stories themselves okay. say. Well, give me your personal opinion. My personal opinion is um, I hear what the stories have to offer. I find some value in the stories and I try to apply wisdom to my life. It helps the direction of my life. It helps me right. escape potholes. I understand. The stories themselves say these are all real. They're beyond, way beyond your perception. They were orally transmitted. At a certain time, historically, they understood people are getting dumber. See, we have a tendency to think we're at the pinnacle of evolution, but the Vedic teachings is at as we go on in this age, we get more and more disconnected. There was a time where architecture was more evolved, where the sciences were more evolved. Where Wait a minute, stop. <laughs> the sciences were more evolved? The sciences, like, like for example, the building of these vimanas, which when we read them now, we just think that's mythological. Mm -hmm. Even weaponry. Um, uh, weaponry, they say, were done with sound. If you study, there's one book called the Donner. But, okay, but do you think this is real? Do I think it's real? I think it could be. I don't think it's definitely. I definitely so don't you think know. At one point in time, human beings had vimanas and they flew around the sky, and then they had weapons that used sound. Could could why not? Was no.